Hello everyone, artist Charles Wolf here. Let's get to some painting today. We're going to begin with a mixture of the ultramarine blue and a touch of the liquid white medium. I am using a bright brush today to put on this first layer of oil paint. I love working in oil paint, it's so rich and vibrant, wonderful amount of pigmentation, and the colors just sing off the canvas. It's a lot of fun to work with. It's a little more expensive, of course, than using acrylic paint. So I would start with the acrylic paint if you're a beginning painter or even an intermediate. Then once you get comfortable with how to paint, then you can move on to working in oils, which are so wonderful, rich, and vibrant. As I'm working down the canvas today, this is a 12 by 12 inch square canvas, I am adding more of the white so that these clouds become lighter in appearance. We're going to be adding more of the titanium white as well as the liquid white medium. Just note that the liquid white medium is a product made by the Bob Ross company. It's the same stuff that Bob Ross himself uses on a lot of his oil paintings. I like the uh, medium because it allows for quick blending. It lightens my colors automatically and makes them apply in layers much easier. I'm not really a paid affiliate or anything like that, but it's just a product that I happen to use and, and like how it works. Grabbing some more of this darker blue mix up at the top here. Nice and strong, a little more of the blue, a little more of the white, and we'll just start to layer this in quickly, covering up the white of the canvas. You can primer your canvases with some gesso. You can use like a red, maybe a brown or a yellow. I will note that this canvas does actually have some gesso on it. It's some white gesso, so you couldn't tell that I have some on, but there's a little bit of texture happening, and that is caused by the white gesso. Here's a little more of the ultramarine blue. Of course, don't forget to paint the edges of your canvas. Today, I'm just going to focus on the front of it and put the edges in last. But if you're painting along with me, it's best to do it as you go along. I'm just going to save myself some time, though, by only painting the front. But you can paint the sides as you go while you have the colors on your brush. Much easier than having to do what I do, which is go back later and try to match color. Much more difficult. Putting in a few more clouds here. A little more of the blue up here. Sweeping diagonal brushwork. doing a quick impression of the sky today. And you know what? I've realized I've actually never done a snowy, a snow picture on my channel. So I'm going to have some snow in this one. Fairly artistic, fairly impressionistic. Snow today is going to be really reflecting a lot of the colors of the sky, which makes sense. This is sunrise, by the way. to say I just love painting clouds they are just so much fun to put in and when you're doing this sort of layered approach where you start with the darker colors at the top and then move to lighter colors near the horizon line automatically the clouds start to emerge good to vary your lights and your darks and that way you get nice layers for your clouds putting in some of the blue that's sort of mirroring the top on the bottom a little more of the white. And because these paints have already been used, I did another painting, my majestic sunrise. With this palette, I have some other colors slightly mixed into the white there, so it might be catching a little bit of the red and the yellow. Let's go make some dark purple now. This is ultramarine blue and a touch of that orange vermilion. Very dark purple. 
I'm just putting in some of these lines that are crisscrossing the foreground. Going for a good amount of depth and distance in this piece. A little more liquid white and the blue mix. Pushing the darks so that the lights seem brighter. And we'll bring back in some of the slider color with the liquid medium. Still using that bright brush today. Great flat edge bristles. I really love using this brush. It does a lot of things really well, especially clouds. quick zigzag strokes do a lot of work for me. Just blending this out over here before we bring in the next color. A few darker areas down over here. Just toss it in. We can always cover it up as we go along. A little more white in a few spots. And we're ready to move on. Here's some light purple, liquid white, orange vermilion, and a touch of the ultramarine blue. I'm using my wonderful stencil brush, round edge brush. Great for putting in large blocks of color. Touch more of the blue, getting that nice purple color. Kind of a pinky purple, more on the pink side. Lots of red in that purple. And we're gonna fill in this white area up here. Get some nice morning sunrise colors happening in the high clouds. We'll put a few down here as well. Good to create more flow with your compositions by utilizing colors throughout the piece. As my brush gets dirtier, it's going to catch more of that blue. And here is some more of the blue white mixture. I'm going to blend the bottom edge of this out. Snow is white, of course, and white is a great color for reflecting what's above. So I'm going to be mirroring what is happening in the sky loosely and lightly in the snowbank below. Probably overdoing it a bit, but that's okay. It is an artistic piece. Never ever feeling like I'm tied down to being photorealistic by any means. And in fact, I prefer to have the painting be more emotive and more colorful than painting photorealism would allow me to do. I like to bring in sort of an abstract element to it by pushing the saturation of my colors a bit. The vibrancy of the work really stands up for itself well, but it also creates, for me, a lot of joy in the actual process of painting. Here is some orange vermilion, and we're going to play this orange-red color through the bottom layer of these clouds. Painting should always be fun. You always want to have a good time with it, and don't stress about the details. In fact, you can often suggest a lot of things and let the viewer fill in the gaps and keep things kind of abstracted, impressioned. It will work itself out naturally. Don't need to worry about every blade of grass, every little twig and tree branch. We don't worry about that kind of stuff. We just try to get the overall impression correct, the overall colors right, the composition intact, get the basic perspective and shapes in the right areas, and loosely the right colors, maybe pushing things here and there artistically as we feel, and the rest of it will work itself out. If you can hear on this recording, it has started raining. It's been raining a lot lately outside.
Here is some lemon yellow and some liquid white. Gonna soften up the top edge of this yellow. Brought in a lot of the orange on the left hand side. And using a smaller angle brush now and grabbing a lot of the white there. Gonna lighten up this bottom edge a bit better. Just blending this out into the blue. Lots of liquid white here, and I'm going to start to bring up the yellow into the blue. That color is going to transition, and so I need to use the white to get me there. Playing the yellow upwards, lots of white, lots of liquid white medium, it's very thin. Stick to the thicker layers of paint underneath, smooth out this transition a bit. Because I have the darker color there first, when I put in these lighter colors, they really show up well. I'm gonna bring some of the darker colors down below for contrast. A little more blue here, dark purple, and we'll just play it in to the sky. Touch of the ultramarine blue, just a few specks of these darker clouds through here. the darker blue mix here. I'm going to lighten this up. I wanted a little more contrast at the bottom. Lots of liquid white here. We're going to blend this out strongly. Back to my dark purple mix. A little more of the white, and we're going to put in a few clouds and break up this section over here. As the clouds get lower to the horizon, there's going to be more variance in them typically, and so using the darker colors to interchange with the lighter colors breaks up the thing and creates more dynamic interest towards the horizon line. And we'll just gently soften some of these lines. We don't want things to be too sharp, but we do want some contrast. That purple plays against the orange as a shadow quite nicely. The purple also mutes the orange a bit and helps it transition into the blue. Here's a bit more of the lemon yellow. Gonna lighten up right at the horizon, just a little bit more intense with the yellow. Using a dirty brush there. Grab some more of that pure yellow and we can just keep layering it over until it looks correct. Oil paint takes a long time to dry, so my colors will be blending as I'm doing this. More liquid white, dirty brush. Just lightens up the area quickly and easily. Some more of this yellow mixture along this top edge over here and down here. Grabbing some of that orange vermilion and liquid white, I'm going to put that in as well. A little bit more of that. We're just blending this smoothly together at a diagonal. Quick brushwork, filling in the space, layering over the blue slightly, blending the two together. Some of that green is emerging, that's okay. A little more of the white and we'll keep moving forward. Just blending things out. The most important aspect of this is to keep the brushwork very active and moving. Keep the bristles shifting from side to side. More of the white here, just lightening it up and making this transition smoother. Here's some ultramarine blue and liquid white. Clean the brush off. And we're going to put in a layer of mountains.
add a touch of the liquid white to that to lighten them up. Let's make these a little taller. A little bit darker as well. And they get lighter as they go to the right, getting closer to the sun, which is on the right hand side. Ultramarine blue, maybe a dash of the Prussian blue for feeling extra adventurous. Prussian blue is such a strong color, don't need a lot of it, and it will take over your other color, so be careful with that. More of the liquid white with the dirty brush, blending out here. Just filling in the space, grabbing more white, and we're just softening things up and covering up all of the visible canvas that remains. Continuing to blend. Here's some more ultramarine blue. And we're going to continue to put in this hill line over here. Break that up and connect over. Just pure blue. The darker color contrasts against the lighter. And then we can divide the canvas accordingly as we need to for the perspective. Ridge lines intersecting. Touch more of the dark purple. I feel like I overdo it a little bit on that right hand side. We're going to blend that out in just a second. Touch more of the white here. Softly mix this together. Touch more of the orange vermilion and the liquid white. We're going to use this color to lighten that back up again. Going to push it more into the reds, I think. We need that line to be there, but I made it a little too broad. So we're going to just blend out and try again. No big deal. Blend and soften that line. A little more white. Lighten up behind it. Touch more blue. This line a little bit straighter and connect it far over to the right. Right where that white is still showing through, we're going to break that up. Touch more of the blue mix. Grabbing a bit of that darker blue mix. A little more of the ultramarine. I'm just going to put in a few of these lines. Dashing them in, just maybe some trees, hills. A couple little things along this edge here to indicate some shadows. I start to connect this over, but realize I don't like the way that looks, so I'm going to erase it right away with some more of the white. Here is a little bit of the red in there too. I'm just going to cover up this section. Looked better before. 
without the blue. So easy to cover things up in oil painting. Just get some thinner paint and it'll go right over. Grabbing a small bright brush that's clean, touch of the Prussian blue, just lifting upwards to create some ridges and some tree-like things happening. Just dabbing and dashing as we go. Maybe a few down over here, moving up towards the other. And we'll play a few right here in the front as well. Touch more of the white. I like those smaller marks in the front, but they looked a little funny in the mid-ground, so we're just going to blend it out. And we'll lighten it up in the front here again. Touch of the orange vermilion and a liquid white mixture. Just a little sliver of light coming right at the bottom of these mountains back here. And with that, after some blending, we are basically done. Thank you so much for watching this painting lesson video. If you did like my work, please consider subscribing to this channel. I'd really appreciate it if you do so. And you can hit the bell icon if you're already a subscriber to make sure that you get notifications each and every time that I post a new video. Hope that you have a fantastic day. Thank you so much again for watching.